How's it going, everyone? I'm the Sorg Dave, and welcome back aboard the Nostalgia Train. Welcome back to Let's Play the Stanley Parable 2. Wait. No. We never got to check out what this was. This is where we stopped the last episode, but this is what the narrator wanted to show us. I thought that was going to be different. I'm starting to get a feeling it's nothing. Um, well, I mean, I get the end is never the end. I get that. <clears throat> this is the story of a man named Stanley. So far, it's the same thing. Stanley worked for a company in a big building building. Okay, building balloons where everywhere. He was employee number 426. Employee Lag is still there. <laughs> job was simple. He same desk, desk same Stanley. And he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did employee 427. every day. Wait, every I wanted to read that. Every year. And although others might have considered it soul ripping, Stanley relished every moment of the orders he took, as though he had been made executive for this job. And Stanley was happy. Okay, so far it's pretty much the same except and for then balloons. One day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. <clears throat> Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Okay. No one had showed up to give him instructions. Same. Call a meeting. Office is filled with balloons, but other than oh. that, that's it. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Yeah, Shocked, nothing's different. That's solid. what's clearly wrong. Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay. Well, that, there's... Nothing new about that. Okay, bye, I guess. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. There is literally no difference. Uh. Bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket. Okay, that's different, I guess. All right. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay. You know what? I'll, I'll follow through. I'll follow through and see what happens. Still no one was here. Yeah. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his I must have my bucket. It's my only safe haven. Oh, what does this say? Oh, okay. Not cost efficient. Standard graphs? Standardist graphs, I think is what I'm supposed to say. What? Wait. Tomorrow. Complete today's. <laughs> Forget the agenda. We'll do it tomorrow. Well, the broom closet's available. Anything different about this? Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it? The yeah, broom closet. What? It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy. It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. Does it now? I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Don't do it, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't handle So it. a broom closet can talk I know how now. Hard it must be. Given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and yeah. lifelong friend. 
Yeah. We're getting into oh. the crawling now, it seems. Is it how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stand I will never hand my like buckets to over to anybody. For a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. Huh? Wait. Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends, that your relationship is purely superficial and convenient, that your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even oh. partially enticing manner. Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really what? tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Uh, Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your okay. entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed. We had so much emotion we kissed. Let him have it. I, the, the, uh, you know what? I can make so many euphemisms, but I'm not going to. <laughs> All right, we're done. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. But I want to go downstairs for a moment. I want to see if this. I could go in there again to see what ha- Oh, hello. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that. You're lucky there are only six of these, dude. Right. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go in there because I don't want that ending yet. We will get it. I wonder if the bucket change. Does the bucket change all the endings or something? Like how they're laid out? I wonder. Hello. Stanley figurine number Another two, three. Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about <laughs> mini Stanley? I wonder. Stanley figs. Um, what about Stanleries? Yes, I think I like that. Actually, Stanleries sounds pretty good. Under your belt. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast, money crisp. What? <laughs> Dang it, I can't open those doors. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. I've never really explored the, the office before. Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the certificate of what? Of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos? Wow! It would be with him always. This is the bucket did, and he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. I do it. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Apparently, even though I'm looking right at it. Bucket, did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845? But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, a voice in my head totally didn't tell me what it was. It's dark. This is certainly the most logical explanation. Oh, wait. Wait. What? Oh, hi. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines. And now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? Stanlerines. better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of Figlies just sounds weird. you get weird. from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Don't interrupt the other stuff while you're doing it, please. Hmm. Where are the other two? Maybe I have to go down one of the, the worst paths to find it. <laughs> Plummeting towards an unknown fate. Actually, that would make sense. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, okay. comforting him, 
reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Yeah, I know, right? I got a bucket and I'm good. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. What do you think, Bucket? Should we go down the escape route or just go forward? Okay, Bucket says forward. All right. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the fact that the bucket is in my right hand. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What How many television screens on there? 700? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. That's a lot of television screens to program into one small room like this. I know it looks big, but on the development standpoint, this is tiny. And Stanley nearly dropped the bucket compared to other circumstances. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything was uh, fine. Actually, no. I mean, you know what? This is actually pretty big for a room, given was how the low it goes. Under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? I hope not. What kinds of things does a bucket want to do friend. or not want to do in the first place? These questions. Furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. You're right, I can't even trust you. Proved that like three episodes ago. But here was the proof the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy, or sad, or content. Yeah. Walking, eating, working. Okay, so all this dialogue is basically the same, right? Place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Okay. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. Yeah! They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. <laughs> okay, let's turn it off. I like that sassy comment. Alright. So, is the ending the same, or is it... Stanley and the Bucket waited in blackness. Okay. Was it over? Was it over? Is it basically yes, the same? They had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments wow. away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze the in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, uh, again, stop it halfway through, and begin watching it in reverse from the end. The, True, the bucket was a wanted life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together with one another to stop. I'm stuck on the idea that he's saying the bucket wants to learn to roller skate. Huh? Lean on to trust, to support, and to what? Wait, what? What? Well, wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? I was don't Stanley know. In the bucket, not about to be freed. Uh, An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty, until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Uh oh. The facility itself recognized the incredible. No, 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 no! I'll put down the bucket. No, 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 no! Bucket, don't cry. Uh oh. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought what? to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now. Um... 
he was about to find out. Okay, apparently there are different endings because of the bucket? Okay. Um, so what happens when you press on instead of off? Why don't we find out? Actually, this is different. Places to search. Wait. There will be a reward for finding them all. Wait. Stop kidding yourselves. I want them so much. I want to go home. There will be cleaning of this wall required. Lies! Who are you? 666 lol. Wow. Lol looks like 427. Ah. Okay. Mission status. Okay, two, a large room, lots of boxes? Some were both with... Yeah, okay, so you have to... Pre to get the other two, you have to... I was right. You do have to pretty much... Trust the completionist instinct. Drard. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go ahead and head to where we were going to go beforehand. Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For um, he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Nah. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. It didn't they work. Why would it work this time? Way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Okay, sassy comment was pretty much, yeah, it ain't gonna work. So, on. Out of the last set, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? Wait, How could the Stanley didn't do it, like the this? bucket did? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Huh? What? Wait. What? Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. Huh? The mind controls were only a facade. To disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Uh, Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his Maybe? Hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. I guess Stanley that would explain the why the, when you leave, because it's they just spent the rest emptiness. of their lives here in this place, living through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. Yeah. <laughs> Stanley was happy. Okay. I guess that's technically the second good end of this. What? But I guess this also means that every ending is going to have a second version with the bucket. So, I guess we'll start figuring those out. But for right now, we're going to leave this here. Um, get ready to have a lot of bucket fun in the future. For the next, like, I don't know how many episodes. The next half of the playthrough. So, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Hey, at least we now know we're more than halfway done. Uh, if you liked it, make sure to push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Have a suggestion for an indie game you'd like to see on here? Let us know in the comments below. Want to check out one that's been done prior to this? 
Click the link in the bottom right corner, our train will take you to that destination. Or if you missed any of the stops on this ride, click the link across my head here and the train will take you there. In the meantime, this train's off to its next destination, but we hope to catch you guys in another ride. Bye!